Welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, the show that gives hope and insight from real voices on the foster and adoption journey. Pull up a chair. We're glad you could join us. Here are your hosts, Mike and Kristen Berry. Hey friends, welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. This is season 17, episode 135, and we're glad you guys have tuned in. We are, uh, with this episode, kicking off a brand new three-part series within this season that we're calling Living in Your New Normal, because right now, globally, all of us, have, are being forced to live in a new normal with the uh, COVID-19 outbreak and quarantine. And that is especially difficult on families like ours, um, parenting children who have a trauma history, who have already lost so much. And then also for us as parents who have had to adjust to a new normal when we began this journey. And now we're doing it all over again with this pandemic. So we're going to spend some uh, some time talking about that. Uh, today we're talking about grieving. Um, next week we're going to talk about adjusting. And the week after that we're talking about accepting. And we're really excited you guys have joined us for this episode. Listen, if you haven't done so already, if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you jump over to our podcast website, honestlyadoption.com, and you can catch up on past episodes and even browse some of our our, uh, featured resources. Thank you guys for tuning in, and here we go with the show. So here we are, we're living in our new normal, COVID-19 outbreak, global pandemic. Uh, It has changed everything for us. There's been a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and mostly a lot of grief. So that's where we want to begin today in this episode, talking about grief and how we manage that and how we handle that. So as of right now, we are coming into three weeks of being in quarantine in our house. Um, Long three weeks. Some of you are are a little bit farther into this. Some of you are are a little bit newer to this. Um, And and I would say overall, yes, the feeling is is grief. Um, But then there are so many more emotions surrounding that. And I was really um, just kind of evaluating what was happening with our own children, with us, with our emotions. Um, And it made me think of those, uh, the different stages of grief. Yeah. And so I was intrigued to look that up and and to revisit that in terms of, you know, what does that look like when the entire world faces a pandemic? Uh, we know for sure when, um, when we face a divorce, a loss, a death, um, that we're going to go through those stages of grief, but this collectively is something that the whole world is going through together. And those, um, I like the seven stages of grief, shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, and acceptance. Uh, I really like that list. And so over the next three sessions, uh, we're going to talk about some of those different feelings and how we're getting through these different stages of grief through this whole process. And, and what some practical things are that we can do uh, to help ourselves cope, but more importantly, to help our kids cope in the midst of this as well. Yeah, and it's been hard. I mean, uh, we have spent the last two weeks in particular, probably more than that now, talking with families, talking with um, parents, some of you out there who are members of our Oasis, of Oasis community, or you are in our coaching group, um, or, or part of Trauma Knowledge Masterclass. We have, um, we've, we've spent a lot of time talking with you, and everybody collectively um, has just said, this is hard. Um, this is hard, not just because we're all in our house together, but you're talking about children. We're parenting children who have already gone through a lot of loss and now we've lost normal, you know? So in terms of grief, um, I think the grief is real and really, I mean, how would you, how, how, We've been talking a lot about this, but it's not just kind of the -the run-of-the-mill grief, if that's such a thing. But what does grief really look like within our house, within our household, and with our children? 
Well, I, I would say what makes this situation unique um, is that often as foster and adoptive parents, we know that we have an obligation to our children yeah. to do well. Uh, we made the decision to become parents, to become foster parents. And we took on um, the responsibility of parenting times the responsibility of adoptive and foster parenting. I, and I think that magnifies our role as parents. We know our kids have suffered trauma. We know that our role is to create a safe environment. Um, we tune into podcasts like this and, and to lessons and um, you know trainings because we know our kids need safety and security. Um, I would say that that's so magnified right now because we're not sure. Yeah. We're not sure that we're safe. We're not sure that our loved ones are safe. We're not sure when this is going to end. We don't know uh, what's going to happen in the future. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with our jobs. We don't know what's going to happen with our finances. And so as parents now, um, we're really facing this this grief um, mm. you know, which I think is kind of the beginning stage of this. It's, it's really that shock, denial, anger. I would say our family has pretty collectively gone through those three steps in the last few weeks. You know, at first it was like, what? We're not going to school? <laughs> you know, and then there's denial. Well, it's probably going to be fine. I mean, I know it's been going on for a long time yeah. in other countries, but like surely it's not. You know, of course, we're still going to yeah, go to prom. We'll, of and go course, to Florida we're still going to spring break and things like that. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and so we just kind of denial first, and then you know we've kind of entered into anger, um, bargaining, depression, testing, and acceptance. I mean, I feel like some days we're cycling through all. <laughs> you know of what them. though? I the bargaining piece is is a, a really important thing to talk about um, because you know we we've dealt with a little bit of that and we've even heard from people who have said man my kid just keeps coming back to me and they the the response is they're just not getting it right but i think that when we really think about this being a step in the grieving process think about when you've lost something big think about the person who's lost a loved one or tragically right the parent who lost a child tragically they bargain with god like, God, if you just give them back to me, I will fill in the blank, right? So I think, you know, our tendency is to say, oh my gosh, my child is just not connecting with the, the reality right. of this. Right, like, can I just see one friend? Yeah. Well, can I just, like... But, like, I just really want McDonald's. Can I just go to Target? I just need to get one thing from Target, no. right? No, you don't understand. And, or they look at us like, why are you sanitizing a Starbucks cup? Not that we've done that, but we've sanitized other things and grocery store we runs. We haven't been going to Starbucks, we so not. that was funny For that weeks. you used that as because we have example. a kid that wanted to go to Starbucks. Um, so, But the bargaining piece is no, important. No, but you've got kind of that, I, I think... You know, at least for me as a parent, I've not experienced something like this with my child before. Yeah. We have always experienced these different stages, these different, um, oh, you know, kind of altering experiences with our kids from a different perspective. So, you know, we were kind of on the outside watching. We were the ones providing support, um, you know, or vice versa. I mean, even as adults, we witnessed or we experienced a job loss. Our kids were on the sidelines. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, we're looking at our kids and saying, well, how selfish. Of course, we're not going to go get you some pizza bites. And then we realize that that really is a human response. Yeah. We are all going through these stages of of accepting that that this is happening. You know, one thing that we've been talking a lot about, too, is the fact that our brains um, are really pretty incredible, and they mm -hmm. store all of these memories, even the ones we can't articulate, now that we're experiencing something that is so unknown, yeah. um, and we're losing different things, um, losing people that we love, mm -hmm. uh, watching our friends lose people that they love. Um, you know, even just losing the sense of normal to get up and put your uniform on and go to school, sense of day to day. We have noticed that, you know, as our kids are experiencing this loss, 
it's really triggering some of those deeper losses. Oh yeah. Uh, that, yeah. that they've already experienced in life. Yeah. You know, I, I want to say something about acceptance and we're going to get to that in a couple of weeks. Um, when we, when we finish this three part series, but you know, I, I, we personally have two daughters who are seniors in high school and this is not our first time having um a, a, having having seniors we've we've had it two other times with our two oldest daughters the difference there was that our two oldest daughters came to us when they were in their teenage years so you know we started parenting them both when they were at each age 15 what's been really hard for us um is that our two daughters right now who are seniors these are the first two children that we have parented from babies all the way through elementary school, through pre, through um, intermediate school, junior high, high school, and now it's their senior year. So this is equally hard for us as parents because we were planning for a graduation open house. We were planning for the last spring break that we take them on while they're in high school. We were planning for their graduation ceremony and dressing up and taking pictures with grandma and grandpa and and brothers and sisters in their caps and gowns outside of the auditorium where they graduated from. And now that is all gone. And of course, not just us, it's not just um, how hard it's been for us as parents, which still is hard. It's also been hard for them. And I find myself feeling at times like, I don't think we're going to get over this anytime soon. I don't even think like if we return to normal over the summer or they go to college, you know, on time as planned, I still think the loss of this goes pretty deep because we have gone through this up and down, these waves of emotion, like deep, deep, deep depression over, I just lost my senior year. And we feel it too as parents who have raised these two girls from babies to young women, I don't think it's going to go away right away. And I think that's okay. I think that um, we have to also realize that this is going to take some a while to heal from. Um, this is going to take a while to, to, to mend the broken parts of our hearts and our minds that have lost so deeply. And we'll get more into that when we talk about acceptance in the third session, but I think it's important to point out because that is a stage of grief, acceptance. And when we learn to, um, when, we, when we're okay with the fact that this may take a while, this is not going to be something we get over right away, um, I think we start moving um, closer towards the healing, to a point of healing, I should say. I think it's interesting that you brought up how parents are feeling um, because it feels a little selfish in yeah, the does. middle of, you know, what our kids have experienced to, um, you know, to think about how we're feeling, the things that, that we're losing or worried about. And I think, you know, that's that's why the Honestly Adoption podcast. It's because, you know, when we're parents and we are supporting one another well, we're able to support our children well. So, um, you know, one thing that we have really been discovering about ourselves in the last few weeks is that it's okay to take a minute and feel sad, feel sad about our jobs, feel sad about missing our friends, uh, feel sad about watching our kids struggle, um, being frustrated because we're all stuck in a little house together, you know, um, it's okay to, to feel those emotions. It's okay to, to take some time and, and feel frustrated about, um, you know, people who aren't taking it seriously, uh, to feel frustrated for our loved ones who are on the front lines of this, risking their lives. Um, it's okay to give some space for that. Because when we give space for our own emotions, um, we're actually able to come back to our children in a way that um, that is more prepared, more stable, more secure, more ready to um, to provide that support that they're going to need. Um, and our kids are needing some extra support right now. A, a lot has changed, um, and a lot is changing. Yeah. So I, where do we go from here? I mean, I think that's the big question. Like, how do we manage the grief that our children are feeling, the anxiety, and how do we manage our own grief when this is something, I mean, this is a, this is a pandemic. This is a, 
a, a virus that does not play by the rules in any way, shape, or form. And, they keep, and the rules keep changing. And we have to keep moving the boundaries. Well, I think, um, you know, one thing that we really have got to do uh, is find this intentional balance with our emotions. Um, grieving is absolutely okay. Being angry is okay. Being anxious is okay. Um, but we can't live in those emotions forever. And uh, finding some ways to celebrate one another, mm. um, to celebrate our children, and to find joy in um, in the things that we do have right now, um, I think that that's a place where we are going to find ourselves stronger. We're finding um, what we're made of right mm-hmm. now. Uh, we know for a fact that our kids have persevered, uh, whatever their story is up to this point. We have the kind of children who have persevered, um, and they will continue to persevere through this. So during that time, um, however long this is, creating memories, um, creating moments of peacefulness, moments of fun, moments of joy, um, and then using this time that we have, this unique, wild, strange, um, unknown, to be able to point out some of the things, um, you know, that maybe we didn't have time for before. We yeah. are, uh, we're currently, you know, we're trying to be so careful with our budget at our house, um, course we're not going grocery shopping you know so we're looking at the refrigerator and all the modern conveniences that we had three weeks ago are are not there but what we're finding is we actually have three of our eight kids um I think they might become chefs I did not even know this this (laughs) magical gift that's suddenly arisen out of this it is it has been the coolest and weirdest and actually a fourth child now just told me they wanted to make cupcakes so we are nowhere near that situation as we're recording so hopefully the house we'll, isn't on fire we'll let you know yeah we're out in our in home in the office. next session yeah. how how that turned out yeah. but you know just this um tapping into some of their creativity their resourcefulness um you know, some of these talents that you know that i really think we're getting lost in the shuffle of over extended over scheduled time all of a sudden we're seeing our kids do some pretty yeah. incredible things with yeah. this yeah i think also um uh, we and i said this a couple of weeks ago um when this really first came out and i i did a, a podcast up a podcast episode on this but i think balancing that with with giving your children permission to have all the feels as as we like to say all the emotions all the grief uh the anxiety giving them permission to express that, um, but also being willing to balance that with what, what you just said, you know, some of the fun or the, the memory making moments. I just saw on Facebook, some good friends of ours, uh, who have a large family, um, their adoptive parents. Um, and they, they, they did a Facebook post that just said, we have hit our limit and we're changing, we're switching it up. And they had all these pictures of just, ditching school for a day, not doing the homeschool deal, heading out um, to a park. Of course, there's nobody around, you know, and you're they're, they're not with other people, but they just switched it up. They just changed it up. You know, um, don't get into the, the trap of feeling like you have to get all this schoolwork done all at once and, and, you know, have this monotonous schedule that doesn't have any kind of breaks in it. Be willing to switch it up, give permission to grieve, give permission to express, um, and like, like you just said, make some memories out of this. Well, be willing to try new things. Yeah, that too. Um, you know, some days, some days, one of us are the ones that have lost our cool. It's not the kids. <laughs> it's and, true. and we have to stop and say, I'm really sorry. I totally panicked. I totally lost my cool. I'm sorry. Yeah. I yelled at you. That was unfair. Um, let's try something different. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have all the answers. You do not have to have this all figured out. I'm, I'm encouraged by some of the things that I see, um, you know, on social media, help others, you know, do, do these things for others. And I think, yeah. oh, that's fantastic. We should be doing something for others. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll share that idea with your kids and you get met with blank stares and you think, oh my gosh, not only do I have no idea how to get through a pandemic, I, I also have raised kids who don't want to help others, you know, or something. 
And then again, to rethink it, to be willing to, um, to say, okay, all right, that's not something you're interested in. What do you want to do? And then yeah. to find out later that they came up with an even better idea. Right, and and right. we have one that has taken over the dining room right now, uh, creating care packages for friends and family. And it is the cutest, most adorable thing. It is. It's even cute. Ever. It is. It is it's even cute when your book that you're in the middle of reading uh, gets about 75 pages glued yeah. together. This child hot glued a book together by accident yeah. but you know reading, what <laughs> i was reading yesterday morning on a, on a beautiful sunny morning with my coffee and all of a sudden i i couldn't turn the page because <laughs> they were glued together but okay that's true but it's so, cute it's cute take a deep breath some things are going to be breath. a mess but you know really it's okay to stop and say what i initially thought was going to happen isn't going to happen let's rethink it let's yeah. try this again yeah 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 well Again, we're gonna we're gonna dive deeper into uh, adjusting uh, and also accepting um, as as we we talk about this new normal, and we're glad you guys have tuned in to this episode. Um, we hope you guys have found some encouragement. And listen, uh, as we depart today's episode, make sure you jump over to honestlyadoption.com. Um, you can subscribe to the podcast there, even leave us a review, which would be super helpful in terms of the visibility of this show. And share it with your friends. Uh, share it with your friends because, again, we're all in this together. And we're all under this in this odd season of life where the whole world is walking through this simultaneously. So, guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode, and we'll see you soon on the Honestly Adoption Podcast. <laughs>